Awake living into uncharted territory. Together. Accelerating your wellness path. Plus, your interconnectivity at the same time. It's not your grandma's or your Veda, but it kind of is. It's the Yoga Healer Real Life Show with Kate Stillman. Absolutely thrilled to have you here to ask you some questions and really to share your wisdom with our tribe, with our our global audience. So I'll just do a brief introduction and then we'll get right into it. For for those who don't know Sri Dharma Vitra, um, I'm sure you actually do. I'm sure you've actually seen this beautiful poster of a man doing all of these different yoga poses that looks like um, that the photos were shot a while ago. And that is who we're talking with today. And for those again, who don't know Sri Dharma Mitra, he first encountered yoga as a teenager before meeting his guru in 1964 and beginning his training in earnest. You can find access to his teachings and what his community is up to at dharmayogacenter.com. And I'll talk a little bit more after the interview and after we've recorded about some other ways to, to connect with his work. So I'd love to, to start with this question of what is Dharma Mitra in, in your experience, what is the purpose of pain and suffering? Hmm. Well, purpose of Pain and suffering. The pain that we are able to see all over creation has some purpose for the cleaning of the mind. And when you coordinate that with the laws, the divine laws of karma, we have karmas. And most of them is pain and suffering mm-hmm. to learn lessons. All the pain and sufferings are generated by previous actions. So in one way, people are paying their karma. <laughs> in another way, we are learning And little by little, through pain and suffering, the mind gets clean, the heart gets purified, and our consciousness deep inside is free. We feel better. We feel more in peace. Let's say that I caused some pain in the past. I would really love to pass the pain even twice to learn a lesson, and then I feel good. Don't you like to pay your bills? <laughs> when I pass through pain with understanding, is a blessing. Thank you, Lord, to pass through this pain. When I pray to others, too, I don't like sometimes to say, oh, God, relieve their pain and suffering. I do it differently. Oh, God, let them understand why they are suffering. (laughs) Mm. If they understand why they are suffering, and then they really don't suffer. Of course, you are witnessing the pain in the body and the mind, but not in yourselves. So there is for all pain and suffering throughout creation is for the cleaning of the mind and the body, and then we are ready to enter the kingdom of God. So, if you are able to understand the pain and pass through them with understanding, automatically one develops a strong desire for liberation. I think that's what I think, because of pain and <laughs> well, and I, I love the life learner perspective that we get to make continual choices by asking ourselves why and what we can witness and what we can learn and what we can change in our behavior. This idea of, of cause and effect, right? Of karma, of cause and effect, and how we're in 
the driver's seat of that. We're not victim to that is what I'm hearing and what you're saying. Yes, all these are, as you know, inside the notions of time in comparison with what is ahead of us after the pain is infinite. And what is ahead of us is amazing after pain. The pain ends at self-realization. And then after that, there is no pain, is the beginning now for, for us to experience amazing things ahead of us. So all beings pass through the same amount of pain and suffering. Since we came to existence until we reach enlightenment, everyone passes through the same amount of pain and suffering. When the pain reaches a specific amount, automatically it triggers something on us. We understand something, and then we stop causing more pain. <laughs> you understand? I understand, so, and I want to invite people listening to ref to reflect on that. Like, what do you know that you do that causes more yourself? And others more pain and, and suffering and being, you know, because we get some, those. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Some of the pains, the people who are passing through the pain should not know the cause why they are suffering. And then they really suffer. Hmm. So these are different karmas. You understand? Mm-hmm. Let's say you rob someone in the past, you steal their possession, kill their pet. Now, in this life, you may pass through the same thing. Remember, we have to pass through the same pain and suffering. But if you knew why you are passing through that pain, the pain will be less. <laughs> but if you don't know, you really... You even end up even cursing God. <laughs> so some karmas are different. Some yogis, all the souls, has the ability to see, at least know why they are suffering. And then they know they do not suffer at all. Only the body and the are passing through that experience. Mm. So everything is perfect. Yes. In the knowing why, is that part, is that starting from what you mentioned before in terms of witnessing it, in terms of being able to ask the question of why, not from a, a victim mentality, but from a curious mentality and being able to, to witness uh, the intuitive or the, the pattern? Okay. okay, all the souls automatically is more, how to say this, since, since they are ethically civilized, their compassion is very good, they become very sensitive. Mm -hmm. They are able to sense what is real, what is not real. Also, they have a you to know about the reincarnation, the laws of karma. And then they really, when they hear about that, they almost 100%, they know, that's it. And then, so all the souls has the ability to cope better with the karmas. Mm -hmm. Some young souls, due to their karma, <laughs> be a little worse than, you understand? In yeah. during some experience, they are not able to understand it. Yeah. So they really suffer. But yeah. this suffering, is, it goes deep into the heart. You learn, you understand, you taste your own medicine. You are not able to cause that 
that to someone else. That would be self sex life. They born again, they know that. Oh, I should not do that. Mm-hmm. Anyone. <laughs> so everything is just perfect according to the condition of the age of the soul. Everybody are different. All the souls and the same, they suffer less. Mm. And the souls, they don't know, they are stuck, they cannot see the light, so they need more pain in order to trigger something else. <laughs> mm. Right, to get their attention. I, right. I, I, I want to highlight how you said taste, taste your own medicine. My my background is a bit in Ayurveda, and the more I understand the function of reflection and digestion to, to digest an experience in order to influence a change in behavior for the future, I think it's, a, it's very important language that you use that I want to that I want to highlight that we have to that we have to we have to taste it, we have to digest our own suffering in right. order to have that insight. Right, you should know. Taste it. You keep repeating it. Every life you keep repeating it. Let's say you love to, uh, to rob people. If you don't experience the same medicine next life, or maybe even this life for many times, you don't learn. Yeah. If you don't, you keep repeating it for eternity. But when you taste your own medicine, after a few lives, oh, I think it hurts. I have to stop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, and, and I, I want to highlight, too, what you're saying about the, the sameness, that no one has an intrinsic advantage over, over anyone else. It's that pain and suffering is the great equalizer. Yes. Pain has a beautiful divine purpose. Yeah. Beautiful. So let's talk about your work with your students and how you encourage your students not to get stuck on on the lower samadhis and not to plateau in their eight limbs of yoga at the spiritual intoxication of of asana. Uh, and and I want to ground this question a bit for our our members here and our listeners here about this about this more sort of extroverted experience a lot of people are having from their yoga practice where they get they get this intoxication of connection and high, but it often doesn't integrate into their actions before and after their practice. That there's can, there can often be a disconnect. You mentioned ethos and compassion and sensing to learn the real laws of the universe and to adjust our behavior in increasing in increasingly more enlightened ways. So I'd love to hear more about this on on how how you encourage your students in this way. Okay. My students who are not they are enjoying the bliss of samadhi, the lower bliss and the good feelings. I encourage them to know a little bit about the goodness, the mind, the senses, the mind. Even samadhi is a mental state. They do not last too long, and it is not eternal. It needs what? The senses of pleasure to enjoy them. Yeah. And this is a pleasure in order to be active, to be alive, it needs what? Consciousness. And we are, with the ego behind that, having the illusion that we are enjoying bliss. But in reality, we can be the witness. I can witness myself watching myself enjoying bliss. So that bliss also, you may compare it like drug. People get attached to it, addicted to it, and they are not permanent. 
We are busy here in this world. We cannot stay always there. We have things hope. We have uh, family, jobs. Sometimes we are sick. Sometimes uh, during sleep it goes away. Sometimes the nature here of this planet may disturb the samadhi of some people who are so attached to it. And they even become, they suffer. So samadhi is just to let the student know that there is something amazing beyond the, the natural pleasures from the, the senses of perception. Even sex, that is the highest, samadhi go a little beyond it. That's just to let the student to know that there is something better, so that the student also feel enthusiastic, feeling better to cope with life. But don't be attached to it. Do not, how to say, get addicted to it because they are not real, they are a state of mind. You have to be very careful. I have many students who get attached to the Samadhi. They look, they appear to look different to their friends. Even in the job, they lost their job. <laughs> they lost most of their friends. Because he's always look like he's in a high state, like a, pro, a person who is drugged. <laughs> yeah. So you have to be careful. Use occasionally, and they are not real. What is beyond that is amazing. We are in reality because of samadhi, not samadhi. So, about the rest of the limbs of yoga, everyone is different. Some people like the third step of yoga. They do asanas. Some people may achieve yoga through the seven steps. Some may use act devotion. So the poses are not soft. Even if you do them, there are only about two most important asanas. A sitting position, it don't have even to be with the legs crossed. You may use a chair, a Egyptian pose to do your meditation pranayama. And the other most important pose, a headstand, shoulder stand. But if you do not feel like doing headstand and the rest of the pose, that's absolutely all right. You, mu you must go then to the gym or do martial arts or swim or do something. Keep the physical body, the glands working in good condition. For example, the Hare Krishna people do not do much asanas. They are busy with the self-knowledge, with self, selfless work, and not being even totally vegetarian. They sometimes include some mozzarella in their diet. But the main thing is to be self controlled a selfless person, and do the other limbs of yoga. Even yeah. if, if you don't like any of the limbs, you have to keep the first two. Mm. The first one is the actual rules. You must be compassionate, active, 
reverent to all beings, including beyond the pet. Automatically, <laughs> automatically one becomes vegetarian. Just keeping the compassion to the highest level, automatically you don't need any of the other limbs of yoga. Mm. Because when the compassion goes beyond the reach everywhere, you feel love everywhere, you see the presence of God everywhere, automatically you develop what? A desire for liberation. And then automatically, psychically, you are led to a good teacher who is going to bring you the self-realization, I mean the self-knowledge first, and then by lots of practice, being a presence of a, a saint, a illumined person, to be able to reach the essence of yoga. The essence of yoga can only be imparted psychically. You have to tune your mind with another mind who has it. So do not worry about too much about the poses, but they are amazing. They are comfortable to do. They stimulate all the organs and glands, stimulate psychic centers in the body, you will develop amazing mental, physical power in a short time. Amen to that. Do you want to talk a bit about that, about how these poses are not, they're not random, that they, that they highly organize the organism of our, our, our multiplex of who we are, mind, body, spiritually, intuitionally, bliss, body. How the poses, I'd love to hear a little more of how, in your experience, of how the, how the poses do this. About the, does the, how does the pose represent a state of consciousness? Oh, the poses are really important. Many, most of them are designed to bring us a specific state of consciousness according to the shape of it. Everything, where even the eyes are, where you breathe, the firmness, steadiness. And then some of them, there is a specific place to keep the attention, to concentrate. And that will produce a specific state of consciousness. I'll give you a little example. Let's say the camel pose. If you stand supreme like a camel pose, firmly, without any movement, steady for a long time, you gain some of the qualities of the camel. That is power, endurance, <laughs> like a camel. You stand on the desert without water for weeks. When they die, they just fall one side without looking at any sign of fatigue. <laughs> <laughs> so you develop endurance and power and what? Camel has another quality, right? Obedience to his master. Mm. So this student automatically get a little get a little more enthusiastic about being more obedient teacher. Mm. There are other poses, according to the position of the eyes, that is, uh, induce some spiritual, some lower kinds of samadhis, different um, spiritual emotions. You understand? But most of them, the reason to be steady and firm is to calm the mind. As the mind becomes calm, the heart becomes steady, and the circulation becomes the pulse steady. It affects the glands. 
some of the glands secrete hormones in the bloodstream to feel extremely elevated. Some pose like a headstand with lots of concentration between the eyebrows. It triggers spiritual bliss and also you improve your inner vision. Start opening your inner eye. First you see lights, colors, and then mental images. According to your beliefs, you may trigger divine vision. The poses are a base design for good purpose. Very few students are able to see the importance. 95% or even more than that, they don't worry about being steady in pose. It's very difficult for them to concentrate due to, to the conditions of today. Technology. Technology. Yeah. <laughs> people get distracted and then people lose their control. They always actually they can't stop. And not even Amen. I I mean, I just want to say, I mean. Don't you worry. We'll be right back with the second half of the interview after we hear from a couple of our sponsors. Stay tuned. Are you ready to up-level your self-nourishment? Dial in the 10 habits of yogis from Ayurveda for longevity and thrive. Body Thrive is starting soon. Apply to be in Kate's 2018 Body Thrive group. Just 80 seats are available this year. Go sign up at bodythrive.com slash course to begin your hero's healing journey. That's bodythrive.com slash course. so excited to announce a new series of free live Ayurveda master classes. In this series, we're pairing up with four mentors from our Living Ayurveda course. If you're interested in Ayurveda, if you want a better understanding of how your body works best, if you're curious about how you can help yourself or others heal with the wisdom of Ayurveda, you don't want to miss out. Join us for four free live master classes today at yogahealer.com slash Ayurveda dash master class. Amen. I, I mean, I just want to say, I mean, and and ask how, and Adam will probably need your help here, but in the course of your teaching over, over decades, as our population is becoming more overwhelmed and distracted, as attention span is becoming shorter and shorter due to sticky technologies and a number of other inputs into our senses. I'd like to know your advice to other yoga teachers listening of how to increase this, the stira, the steadiness, this ability to, to be more still when it seems everything outside of the yoga classroom is, is doing the opposite. Some of us, some students, are more enthusiastic about spiritual things. We are more serious about being happy, not happiness, short happiness from the sense. But people are more serious about reaching some eternal happiness. And then they will be able to deal with the technology. Mm. Technology is amazing. It is really nice. It is, it, it brings comfort. It becomes easier for us to achieve our goal. But those souls who are more, how to say, as I just explained before, they are able to not to be 
addicted to them, such as the cell phone, the YouTube, and the Netflix, and all these things. They are able to follow the teacher instruction. Usually the teacher tells them, be careful. They're really desperate, depressed, about to commit suicide. Okay, go to the online and enjoy your science fiction movies. <laughs> and that uh, is better than go to the bar and dealing with drugs. It's better to play with your cell phone. But even so, you should have a specific time, time to enjoy that. Everyone should have a time for their practice of meditation, study of the scriptures, at least 10 minutes of the posture. And then if you are able to keep the postures and the meditation automatically, you are calm enough happy enough, you don't need happiness from the, the distraction of technology. Yeah. But technology also is amazing. And you can get a script online, overnight, FedEx. You can even find a teacher online, a guru online. So you can get your green juices, Deliver it to you. I don't have to go to the Spain and suffering. So you, there are yoga classes available almost in every block of this city. Mm -hmm. You use your cell phone. You, everything is amazing. You go to the YouTube. You can enjoy. Everything you like. You want to find out what kind of vitamin you need, you can get it. So you can ask your guru. So everything in your fingertips. So you have lots of time. It, it is really a blessing, but you have to be careful not to be addicted to pleasures that it may bring. So. Yeah, I love what you're saying in how the practices, the yoga, the, the sitting, the, the practices of, of the eight limbs, they, they adjust and optimize our biochemistry for this internal experience of, of a deeper happiness. And then we're less drawn to addiction or stimulation, whether it's the bar or YouTube excessively or, or whatever or whatever it is, that this, this cultivation of this inner endocrine, yeah, you, right? Ex yeah. When you taste the bliss from your meditation and that with a little knowledge of what is ahead of us, amazing self-knowledge, it triggers some place that's beyond sex, beyond food, beyond anything. And then... You understand? It's not available all the time, but you lose your enthusiasm towards the pleasures of the world. Yeah. So you enjoy them, you touch them. Like, let's say myself, I can drink today and don't think about it for six months. Yeah. I could smoke a week now and don't worry about it for the next year. <laughs> yeah. So it's under my control. So. So and, let's talk. Yeah. and it is a, for me, it is a great challenge. New York City, I think, is the best place in the world because you have all the distractions, everything here to make you strong. You understand? Yes. You don't are able to do your, I know many people who come from the ashram. They have silence then, they don't have any distraction. Mm. They are always in samadhi. But when they get here to New York City, they usually get angry. They can't meditate for one second. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? 
Oh, I do. I do. It's the, you know, being, knowing where you are, if you can, you can, you can know your center by your centeredness and not being pulled to things that yeah. you'd rather not be pulled towards. A little flower in the swamp. <laughs> yeah. There are many people coming from some villages in India, very quiet. There is no candy, no beer, no drugs, no this, no job. They can always be blessed. They always bring things here. When they come to the United States, they are bombarded with the temptations. Yeah. Uh, being worshipped by thousands of people. Money. You can get limo if you work with this, 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 even sex. So many of them get lost. <laughs> yeah. But something deep inside of their heart, little by little, they overcome that. You understand? Everybody goes to the yeah. right path. Well, and it so. speaks so much to the the evolution and of consciousness to the most simple pleasures, the pleasure of, of sitting and, and being. Yeah. Just sitting and, and being, not having to. Well, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> you, feel, you may not, most yogis may say, say, for some reason, whoever is really enlightened has some real knowledge, they cannot be actionless. Yeah. They have to share the way with others. But there are exceptions, very few exceptions. A yogi, a saint, not only a, I keep saying yogi, anyone can be a saint. A saint also can go to a cave and radiate love 24 hours a day, love and peace. In reality, there are some beings like that, not maybe not only in the physical body, some are in the physical body radiating love constantly in order to keep love and the hate in this, in this planet balance. You understand? Yes. And that is you are doing something to help something, not just to enjoy. Otherwise, you're just in vacation, enjoying something. In order to enjoy something, you need senses of perception. <laughs> it's not you. You are just stuff with drug. Spiritual drug, wasting your time. Mm. Better to share the way. Automatically, by sharing the way, you always enjoy some of that. Mm. Yes. Yes, indeed. And Remember I one thing. In the beginning, when people have the first taste, everyone stay on that for a few days. You understand? And then we realize we have to deal, we have to cope with our obligation, our household obligation, whatever, taxes. <laughs> mm. My sense is it's a natural evolution of the path of, of practice is, is we may come in for self-centered reasons and as we and as we do the practice we naturally become more selfless we naturally become more desiring to help others we naturally want to give because we are yeah. We're, yeah it comes natural when you start realize that the self is one not realize you have to realize not to believe and you feel like you are in everybody, God is everybody, but everybody is one. Automatic, when you see pain in others, you feel like it's in you. You understand? You want yeah. to stop. You want to stop that. You want to clear the way not to suffer. Because whoever is suffering there, you feel like it's in you. Like one 
cell of your body? <laughs> Everybody like one cell of your body. Someone is in pain there, you're trying to to go there and do something about it. Absolutely. How we can feel more, right? The more we do the the practices, the more we become like you mentioned before, more sensitive and yeah. in, and naturally in that sensitivity, we can feel more of what others are experiencing. So we naturally have more empathy and compassion because we can feel it on subtler and subtler levels. That's that word sukshma, right? Of, of our perception becomes more and more subtle. I'd, I'd love to hear you talk about this, about this, the subtleness of the worlds that open, of, of the senses that open as, as a path to self-realization. So, she wants to know about as you go deeper into practice that you become more aware of subtle things. Of course, uh, mm -hmm. as you get self-knowledge, we leave that cooking in our mind for a while. We keep coping with everything, but it takes a long time for that realization become more and more real, <laughs> totally mm -hmm. realized. And self-realization is not the end. Self-realization is just the end of pain. The name explains self, Realization, to realize, not to be there, <laughs> but just to realize that we are eternal. We are a portion of the God or the forces. And after, now I have to add a few things here, the meaning of life. <laughs> Up to self-realization, a physical form here, we already experience everything. We went past through all forms, like the postures, right? You have all forms. Mm. Actually, the poses are supposed to take all shapes of all, all the creation. So we pass already through all the physical forms. But after self-realization, we have the subtle manifestation of God. You understand that? The physical world and all this that we can see here is the loss, the gross manifestation of God. For those who cannot see beyond the five senses. After self-realization, we are endowed with the divine perception. And then we can start working, living with the subtle manifestation of God that is subtler in a different level. You understand? So we keep gradually increasing our divine perception in order to be able to experience the subtle manifestation of existence. Mm. I don't like to go much beyond that because some people not, may get confused. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, let me give you an example here. Let's say before the Big Bang, who was here? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Okay. So all the creation came, when the time came, all beings came to existence. So all beings need what? A portion of God, the self, the life, in order to be able to be conscious of something and needs a portion of God itself. So during self-realization, 
we realize that we are that little portion. So after self-realization, that is not the end. The beginning mm. in order to experience God manifestation in subtle levels. We call it spiritual or psychic something. From where we are now, we are not conscious of that. That's it. Or you want to go? Or you want to go a little further? Let's say next time I return here, the iPhone going to be amazing. Yoga, no need for yama and yama anymore, because people be ethically civilized in the technology, no need for knowledge. Google, for me, Gogananda has all the answers. <laughs> Meditation will be much easier to do because there is no distractions. People don't need to take drugs or drink or take pills to be happy. Everybody be in harmony. Eating correctly, being in harmony, everybody automatically is happy. So, also, the, the iPhone maybe have the capacity to be oldish. And also our pituitary gland, our senses of the sense of perception would be a little bit better. You understand? That is what is ahead of us here in a physical plane. Let's say five generations from now would be amazing. People naturally are able to see type of things. The sense. God manifestation, his subtle forms. But if people do not believe in that, they may go to heaven. There are heaven where you enjoy felicity, but you don't learn anything. Hmm. Is that confused for you? No, I got it. I, I, it's active. I mean, it's the it's the bodhisattva vow of there's always there's always an evolutionary impulse to learn and to grow and to be part of the 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 active force of manifestation that that is the that is the nature of of who we are. So to be in a to be in in a in a in a heaven that you we cannot be the active manifesting principle evolving um, is a pretty limited. It's a pretty limited experience <laughs> compared to what's what's possible if we're aligned to and awake to who we really are. I, I myself believe in the evolution. I want to see what's here next life. Yeah. I want to be here next life and the next. I want to be here 20,000 years from now to see how technology ah, and how the samadhis are. Three generations from now, this samadhi that we are having here, you may compare it to like the samadhi of a weed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, next life when people are eating really vegan, perfect food, you really feel good. Yeah. Really happy. You must can sense subtle things. And yeah. the next phase in the cell phone, people go to the station. Oh, I would like I would love to see cars without the wheel, without pollution. Oh, I'm yeah. amazing and harmony. I want to be in Hong Kong in half an hour or nothing. Well hours. So technology be amazing. And then yeah. be back with another blue planet. This is what I have in my mind. I don't want to go in Samadhi or go to heaven. 
<laughs> Yoga will be all, always in the, in the last two steps. <laughs> mm. Mm. Oh, well, Sri Dharamitra, I so, I so, so appreciate your transmission and your, your time, your teaching, your being with us. Adam, I appreciate you being sure. here in service. I, uh, yeah, really wonderful to spend the last can hour. Yeah, oh, please, you can say as much as you want. I got all day. I got all year. <laughs> If you don't want to accept any of these the things that I said before, at least be vegetarian, mm-hmm. at least stand on your shoulders and sit quietly for five minutes, rest your mind on the infinite. You understand? Yeah. Be vegetarian and be nice to your pet and to your guests. And then out to match you, happiness will come. I have to do yoga. (laughs) Thank you so much. Mm, Deep deep bow. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you. And I'd love to. Yeah. And Adam, I'd love to connect with you too. And to, we can do that via, via email. Yes, thank you both so much for your time, and we'll we look forward to spreading this conversation far and wide. Thank you, thank you so much, and thanks for giving Sri Dharma the opportunity to share. Oh, anytime, anytime. Um, have a wonderful day. You too. Yoga Healer Real Life Show with Kate Stillman. Yoga Healer.